In this episode of Real World HVAC, we're going to go over what happens when you have to get a new indoor unit or evaporator coil to go with your older outdoor unit. This video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. This is your friendly reminder that we are giving away these recovery pliers from Yellow Jacket at the end of the month. So make sure you are subscribed and make sure you are commenting on every single video in the month of June to make sure you have your chance to win. So I had a job several years ago where an evaporator coil was leaking in a train metal air handler. And by metal, I'm referring to the older TEC, TWE type models. Now this was a system that was probably from, I don't know, between 2000 and 2010. Outdoor unit was in really good shape and the indoor evaporator coil, which was the component that was damaged, was actually not in good shape. It was leaking. So when I called to get a price on it, I'm not a train dealer, so I don't know if the pricing would have changed that much for a train dealer. All I know is the price for me was so high, it was, I think, about $1,500 for that particular coil, my cost. So it was easier for me just to go buy an air handler. And for that amount of money, I could actually afford to go buy the TAM-7 Hyperion air handler, which was perfect for my situation because I was dealing with an R22 outdoor unit, and even though it was in great condition, it was still R22. Those air handlers actually had a dip switch that allowed you to switch from R22 to R410A and back and forth based on what refrigerant you needed since it had an electronic expansion valve. That allowed me to pair these things up and it was such a close pairing that it really didn't make much of a difference. Now that's not always the way it works. If you had to replace an evaporator coil and it's easier just to purchase an entire air handler because of the cost of it, now, weighing in the cost of the installation is it's definitely different when you're changing out an entire air handler because you get into ductwork. But I mean, even in instances where they don't carry the part anymore, and it happens, even on systems that aren't that old, sometimes they don't carry the parts anymore for whatever reason. It's sort of nerve-wracking, but it does happen. What are the dangers you get into if you have to upgrade the air handler to a more efficient version? Like, you had a matchup for 12 sear, but maybe this new matchup is 14 or 15 sear. That's what the air handler is made for. Of course, your outdoor unit isn't 15 sear. So what's the danger? What's going to happen? So what typically is the case with a more efficient air handler, it has one or two things. Either has an upgraded blower to make it more efficient, ECM blower, variable speed, or constant torque, or it has larger evaporator coil. You've seen new air handlers, they get rather large. Goodman had some air handlers, which I used to call aircraft carriers because they were so big. They were 22 by 24 by, geez, like 63. They were huge. And Train makes some of these bears too, but luckily the Hyperion air handler, one of the good things about it is you can break it in half a lot of times. There's little notches. It comes apart in two different sections. It's like having a modular air handler, which I've also used in the past to make sure I get the proper sear matchup. So there are options out there. The danger is, of course, they might be bigger and they might not fit in the space where you need them. And then as far as performance, if you have a higher efficiency evaporator coil, sometimes that has the same effect that back in the day where you had a matchup where there was a standard condenser and an upgraded evaporator because they would match those up to get a higher sear rating. You'd end up having decreased latent cooling. Because of the size of the evaporator, sometimes that suction pressure would be higher. And then the dew point in the evaporator would also be higher so you wouldn't get the dehumidification that you would have with a smaller coil. That's why we've talked about this a lot of different times, where you'd have a brand new system, like I installed a split Bryant system, an evolution system, two-stage, and you have to lower the blower speed so you get that latent cooling, because once you lower the blower speed, the dew point in the coil will come down. It's a little bit frustrating because it's almost like you have to derate the machine to get comfort out of it. It qualifies for a certain efficiency when it's at 400 CFM per ton, but you're not comfortable at 400 CFM per ton because the latent load may be too high for that machine. So you have to lower the blower speed so you can change the ratio of sensible uh, output and latent output. Now that sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. It's basically slowing air down across the coil so that coil temperature comes down, allows more water to condense out of the air, fall into the drain pan and flow away. So a major problem is dehumidification. Now, depending on the difference in efficiency and size, it may not be that big of a deal. And you can lower the blower speed, but it's always like a dance you do between total capacity and latent capacity. 
because you can't just lower the blower speed more and more because eventually, you know, your top capacity starts coming down. You want to be able to keep up with the sensible load. So you can only do a certain amount, so you kind of have to play with it to make sure that you have the dehumidification you need. That was always the main problem with those, that and physically getting them into the location. Because everybody knows it's been around as long as I have, back in the day, air handlers could be quite thin. You get air handlers that were 11 inches wide, you get air handlers that are 14 inches wide, and now, if you go to a high efficiency air handler, they're gonna be much bigger than that. They're not gonna fit in those closets that they were in. They're gonna be too tall, too fat. Sometimes the attics that they were in, the regulations were also way different back then, and you can't actually physically get them into the attic. You had to cut an opening in the attic to get the things up there. That's the pain in the butt of the HVAC industry. It's been that way for a long time, and that's one of the main things you have to worry about. So in the case of older outdoor unit and newer coil, Sometimes the performance isn't quite the problem, it's the actual physical location. But you also have to be aware of any performance issues so you can make those adjustments. And always, in my opinion, you should have a TXV on those. Because with any mismatch between efficiency or even brands, you want to have a TXV to help regulate that superheat output in that coil. Because when mismatching, you might get an unpredictable effect and a TXV kind of takes a lot of that away because it'll do some of that regulation of superheat. If you try to do an orifice, sometimes the orifice size that you have with your coil or that you try to switch it to may not be quite right. And in different situations, it may flood the evaporator or starve the evaporator based on what size it is. So TXV all the way. That's a good rule of thumb when you have to make these compromises. TXV. Get yourself a TXV. There's a lot of aftermarket TXVs with adjustable superheat knobs on the bottom. I like those. They come in really handy and they will make performance a lot better. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Hopefully you don't get into the situation too often because it is best to have a matched pair in the real world that doesn't really happen all the time. So try to do the best you can. Take the steps to cover your buttocks. Either don't do the job or do the job in a certain way where it's going to work the best it can and definitely let your customer know that what you're doing is, you know, you're compromising for whatever reason led you to that compromise. My name is Zach Sioda. This is HVAC Shop Talk. I'll see you guys on the next one. And God bless all of you. Save 8% off your order at truetechtools.com by using the Shop Talk discount code.